Hey guys, so if you saw Tuesday's video, you saw uh, Terry and I had 16.55 good enough for fifth place at Granbury. And if you paid attention, there were, I think, three rods thrown all day. There was a little bit of square billing done, which I don't think we weighed a fish on our square bill. But everything else was caught one of two ways. It was either caught on what we call a mojo rig or flipping. So I wanted to show you real specifically this setup. So the mojo rig to me, and, and there's split shot rigs, a lot of people call it different stuff. It is extremely effective around two types of, of cover structure fish. The first one and how I discovered it was uh, years ago on Toledo Bend or Main Lake Point out in front of housing, the grass was just starting to grow up. So the fish were kind of milling on top of the grass uh, and, and actually, the, the funny story is Newberry actually is the one who introduced me to this because a co-angler whipped his butt with it on Richmond Chambers under the same scenario. There was a little bit of a grass bed. The co-angler had one of the very first ever that we knew of fluorocarbon lines on his rod. And he, I think the, if I remember right, it was a, it was a, uh, an ABA or something. I think the co-angler had the big string of the tournament and he was throwing this specific rig. So. What basically it is, is it's a mojo sinker. Now, in this case, I'm using a very, very small mojo sinker. I think that's probably a quarter ounce uh, on 15 pound Seaguar in Vizex. I throw it on either a three or a four aught EWG hook. Uh, that's, a, that's a four aught specifically. Now, Terry was throwing a, a Zoom Fluke uh, in watermelon and or green pumpkin. I stayed with, this is a D-Shad, that's a Yamamoto bait. And I stayed with the white or the one that's kind of a blue-white. I'll put it on the screen right there. It's sort of a muted blue-white color. And really it was just to mix it up because we were throwing on kind of the same cover. We generally didn't make two casts of the same cover. But I feel like maybe I had a few more bites than he did, but that may not be exactly right. And it's interesting, historically, I throw brighter colors on darker days and on bright days like that, I would throw a green pumpkin or a watermelon. But on this particular day, I got bit on this and I just never laid it down. So I do one thing differently on this rig. Now, by the way, when I'm throwing it around grass, I throw a little bit bigger sinker on that. I believe that's probably a quarter ounce sinker. But one of the things I used to do is I took one of those rubber inserts and I would put it into the line and that's how I would hold that bait in place or hold that sinker in place. I've stopped doing that. I now use six cents bobber stoppers. And there's a very specific reason I do that. If that hook gets hung up and you have one of those peggots on there, you can't really move this. Well, with this one, you can reel down to it and with your rod tip, you can push that sinker all the way down there so you can pop that loose. Uh, if you're hung up. So that's why I have gone to any time I'm throwing this rig I've, and you can saw, see how easy it moves on that line, but it won't move when you're casting it. So I have gone to using bobber stoppers as opposed to an insert when I'm fishing this particular rig. And I also feel like it's a little better on your line because you're not crimping that, that line against the rough insides of that sinker at all. Now I'm throwing this on a uh, on a longer rod. So this is a seven foot six. This is an old, it's the Mag Bass Rod, Magnum Bass Rod 3. Now they make this same rod, but it now looks like that. It's a different color rod. But I'm throwing it on that. I'm throwing it on a, a six, eight to one reel. And I'm doing that because I can get it in pretty fast. I don't feel like I need a real high speed reel on that. And you saw all I'm doing it is we're throwing it on those lay downs and also on those docks. And it's just such a, I told Terry, I said, you know, I would, I would really term it sort of a finesse power fishing uh, style because you're fishing visible carp structure, uh, but you're doing it in a finesse style. Now I stayed with 15 pound line. Terry was throwing 17 pound line. Uh, but truthfully, my, I don't have my 17 pound Invisex up here. And in all of these scenarios, there's at least 50 feet of line out. So I didn't feel like I was really going to shock a fish real hard. And generally they're so shallow. Once you pull them a foot or two, you kind of got them out in the open. So that was my mojo rig setup. Now, my other bait that you saw me throwing a lot was a power worm and a power, just a seven inch blue flight power worm with a uh, 316 ounce sinker on it. Again, bobber stopper on either side of it. 
three aught hook. In this case, I'm throwing 20 pound Invisex, and I'm doing that because I've got those metal poles around the dock, and I wanted to have all I could get. I did not break a fish off, thank you, Lord. Uh, it's a little bit uh, shorter rod. It's a mag bass one, so it's a seven foot rod. It's a little easier to manage around those docks. And although they're both moderate, heavy action rods, because this one's shorter, this one actually is sort of heavier, if you will. So um, that's the setup I was throwing that on. And really the only four baits that I threw the whole time I was there, uh, that's right, four baits I threw those two, uh, I'm sorry, during the tournament, I threw a bunch of stuff in practice, but I threw those two baits. I threw a Strike King chick magnet and I threw in, in a, in, I think it's called root beer color. And I threw a uh, Six Sense 100 series and Chartreuse Pro is what it's called. I think that's the name of it. But I just couldn't get quality crankbait bites in the tournament. We got some in practice, but we didn't in the tournament. So that's really what we settled in on for this tournament. And again, 15 pound in Vizex when I'm making those longer casts, is 20 pound in Vizex when I'm fishing a little bit closer. And uh, now I'll take you all through the practice and kind of my thinking as we work through practice right here. Excuse me as I eat my donuts. It's about 9.30. And uh, although I don't really have any footage for you, the morning's looking brighter. So uh, I pulled up on a, actually Terry called me and he had caught a three pounder on a Main Lake Point. <coughs> we basically came out of the same launch ramp. He went that way and I came this way. I don't know exactly where he is, but I don't think we're more than two miles apart. And uh, he has caught, uh, he's had several bites. He's got his hooks bent over. And just around the corner, I pulled up on a point and there was a, uh, a big lay down up there. And I literally thought to myself, that's too shallow to throw on. And I picked up a D shed, which is just basically a, a Yamamoto flute bait. It's a little heavier and pitched it up on there and one between three and four pounds just I saw the whole thing just come out and smoked it. Swam off with it and I shook her and got her to turn it loose. And there was another little lay down, I mean just branches basically in the water across that pocket, super, super, super shallow, but the sun was in my eyes and I threw up on it and I had another one boil on it. I don't think the second one was as good. But uh those are all fish kind of in the same section of the lake, all on these little secondary points, or excuse me, main lake points, not secondary points. And uh, so we're gonna keep working off that pattern and see what uh, see what we can get. I mean, at this point, you know, tournament's tomorrow. You don't wanna start sticking a bunch of fish, but you do wanna get some bites. I threw a, I've been throwing a movement a bunch, which is a, it's a six cent bait. It's, it's basically designed to be a wake bait, but you can run it just under the water. And it's got a real wide wobble. And I know this is gonna get some pressure through here, so I've been trying to get bit on it, but I have not had a bite on it yet. So right now I've got three or four or five different crankbaits tied on, and I'm just gonna rotate through them and try to get some confidence. I'll probably stick a fish or two still. I haven't not covered my hooks up, but it wouldn't take me long with getting bit on a crankbait to cover my hooks up. So, and I'm gonna to continue to look for wood. I've marked five places now. I wanna throw that little D shot on. So I'm gonna continue marking those as well. Just found a good deep one around the corner, probably four or five feet deep that I got on top of before I saw it. So we'll just keep poking away. Hopefully this is gonna turn out a whole lot better than last weekend did. So stick around guys, got some donuts. All right, so you see that's kind of what we work through. We communicate quite a bit during practice at this tournament uh, because we hadn't had a lot of time on the lake. Terry got to spend a couple of days down there and I got to come back down. You know, I had been down a few weeks ago. I came back on Saturday and our main focus was let's find a section of the lake. Now I did run back up the river for 30 minutes and I missed one good fish on a spinnerbait, but I fished kind of what I thought was the juice up there and only had that one bite and I really decided to come back and stay in that section of the lake where Terry felt like he could get the most bites, and that's what we did. We just rotated through about three or four miles of the lake, and we both found some good structure, and that's where we were able to catch those fish off of. So really enjoyed the tournament. We got uh, 
Whitney this next weekend, which will be the, uh, do, 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 uh, not this weekend, the following weekend, we've got Whitney um, TTO Pro Team. So we'll be down there for a couple days of practice, a couple days of tournament, and we hope to come up with some good footage for you guys there. We have equally, equally little fishing experience on Whitney, but it sets up a lot like this lake and a lot like Texoma and some other stuff we're both familiar with. So we, we have high hopes going to Whitney as well. And then we'll come back and we'll go to the Red River, which is a completely different animal right after that for the Bass Champs Championship. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. And we'll be back with more videos next week. See you soon.